All right, guys, it's a new year and we're back with another educational video. Now in this video, I want to talk about a study that came out and kind of do a little bit of a deep dive on it. I started getting notifications on my Twitter last week from a few vegans who wanted me to kind of break down this study because they said, well, doesn't this show that a vegan diet is superior to a diet even including uh, lean meats when and even when saturated fat is equated. So they sent me this study and it's called Effects of Red Meat, White Meat and Non-Meat Protein Sources on Atherogenic Lipoprotein Measures in the Context of Low Compared with High Saturated Fat Intake, a Randomized Control Trial. And this is published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Really cool study. Really cool study. I dig it. So what they did was they randomized about, um, I think it was about 110 people in total that finished the study. Um, and they randomized them into two different groups. Actually, it ended up being like six total groups, but we'll, we'll, we'll break it out. We'll break it down. One arm was a high saturated fat diet. The other arm was a low saturated fat diet. Within each of those arms, there was a high saturated fat, high red meat group, high, and a low saturated fat, high red meat group. There was a high saturated fat, white meat group, and a low saturated fat, white meat group. There was a high saturated fat non-meat group and a low saturated fat non-meat group. Now, what's cool about this is most of the randomized control trials out there, and especially the epidemiology evidence, never really equates for a lot of these different lifestyle factors. So they tested these different diets for four weeks and they had washout periods because everyone served as their own control during the diets. And basically, the diets were very, very similar. Um, they really did a nice job setting this study up. I won't go through too much of the study breakdown, but basically each group between the high saturated fat um, groups, red, white, and non-meat, their saturated fat, calories, carbohydrate, protein, fat, everything was pretty much the same. Okay. Then in the low saturated fat groups, same thing. I want to jump to the conclusions because this is kind of what got a lot of people's attention. The results of the present study support current dietary recommendations to adopt dietary patterns with high vegetable content, but do not provide evidence for choosing white over red meat for reducing CVD risk on the basis of plasma lipid and lipoprotein effects. Moreover, the weaker association with CVD risk of large LDL than small LDL suggests that the impact of high intakes of red meat and white meat, as well as saturated fats from dietary sources, selectively raise large LDL subfractions, which may be overestimated by reliance on LDL cholesterol, as in the case with current dietary guidelines. Future studies should test the effects of saturated fat content and dietary protein source on atherogenic lipoprotein indices, as well as clinical CVD outcomes in individuals with hyperlipidemia. Basically, what a lot of people took away from this study was that hey, this study equated saturated fat, equated calories, equated protein, uh, equated carbohydrates, all this kind of stuff. And they still showed that even white meat, people on the white meat diet had higher levels of cholesterol and, um, and LDL than people who were on the non-meat group. Well, first off, this is why it's really important to go through and read, read these studies, like read the full text. So let's, let's break down the actual, what the data actually says, because those conclusions, those conclusions are quite uh, provocative. So let's look at the high saturated fat groups. Okay. On average, when they started their total cholesterol was 4.5 millimoles per liter. After four weeks on the high saturated fat diets, their total cholesterol was 4.42 in the red meat group, 4.39 in the white meat group, and 4.22 in the non-meat group. So all of the groups reduced their total cholesterol. Now, it wasn't, I don't think it was significant in the red meat group, but they all stayed the same or, or went down. Even with high saturated fat and high red meat, it dropped. I'll say it again. High saturated fat, high red meat, it dropped. Now the non-meat group dropped more, but I'm gonna to get to that here in a minute. The non-meat group dropped more, but it was only about a five or six percent difference between the red meat group and the non-meat group. 
and then the uh, the white meat group was in between. So, to me, the story is all groups improved, <laughs> and the non-meat group improved a little more. Now, if we look at the low saturated fat intake group, all the groups improved more than in the high saturated fat group, which you would expect. So, that group started out with a uh, baseline cholesterol level of 4.53 and in the red meat group it dropped to 4.11, white meat group 4.14, non-meat group 3.98. That is about a 3% difference I believe. I'm doing the math on the fly here but I believe it's about a 3% difference. So you're talking about a 3% difference between the red meat and the non-meat group. Okay, it's, it's a difference. Um, it seems like the non-meat group improved more. Uh, and then if we look at LDL cholesterol, it pretty much mirrors total cholesterol. So the high saturated fat group started with an LDL cholesterol of 2.69, and they, the red meat group was 2.64 after four weeks, white meat was 2.61, non-meat 2.46. So very similar improvements. All groups had a reduction. Uh, and then in the low saturated fat group, they were better than all the groups in the high saturated fat group. They went down, the red meat was down to 2.35, white meat 2.38, non-meat 2.22. Again, around a 5% from the red meat to the non-meat group difference in, in blood uh, LDL. So, yes, it's better. However, you have to go through and look at the diets as well. If you look at the dietary intakes of cholesterol between the groups, now they did a really good job at trying to make these diets very, very similar. But the one thing they didn't equate was dietary cholesterol. So in the non-meat group, the non-meat groups consumed anywhere from 30 to 60% less dietary cholesterol than the meat groups. That is more than enough to explain the difference in LDL and total cholesterol when you're talking about a very small difference. So a 30 to 60% greater intake of cholesterol with only a difference in, cholesterol, in, in uh, blood cholesterol and LDL of about three to 7% between the red meat group and the non-meat group, depending on the marker you're looking at and if you're looking at the low saturated fat group versus the high saturated fat group. I think it was a really cool study, really well designed, and I'm not, I'm not knocking the study for not equating for cholesterol. It's extremely difficult to equate all those dietary factors, which points to why it's very hard to isolate out these factors in epidemiology. Because my takeaway from this study, in contrast to what the author stated, my takeaway from that study is, hey, if you control your calories and you eat a well-balanced diet, even if it's high in saturated fat, your blood cholesterol and LDL probably won't go up and might even go down. If you eat, and if you eat a low saturated fat diet, your LDL and blood cholesterol will definitely go down. Even if you're eating a high amount of red meat and white meat. I would say if you, if you were really worried about it and you wanted to eat red meat and white meat based on this study, make sure you're controlling your total cholesterol and your saturated fat intake and you'll probably see the same reduction as people who don't eat meat based on this, based on the fact that it's only a three to 7% difference between red meat and no meat whatsoever on cholesterol and LDL in the blood, even though the red meat group and the white meat groups were getting 30 to 60% more dietary cholesterol. All right, guys, that's my breakdown of the study. I hope you enjoyed it. I try to bring these as non-biased as I can. That being said, everyone has bias, and that's okay. Bias is okay, as long as you're open to new information. So I didn't go into the study saying, how am I gonna debunk this thing? I went into the study saying, huh, that's interesting, let's check it out. And hey, it was a really well-designed study. I just don't quite agree with the author's conclusion, but that doesn't mean the authors are bad people or they're paid off by the vegan industry or anything like that. We need to get away from this idea. All studies have limitations. That's okay. It's important to talk about them and address them. So, kudos to the authors. They did a bang up job, very well designed study. I don't think that the study is a strong case that everyone needs to cut out meat. Okay guys, that's it for this week. 
Hope you enjoyed it. If you want to read the study for yourself, link is in the description. I'll catch you next week. Oh, by the way, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, go buy some of our shit. Catch you next time. Thank you.